Hello and welcome to News at Noon. I'm Aftab Borka. The United States Supreme Court is taking up a crucial case that will be seen as historical. The top court is hearing arguments on the legality of same-sex marriage. Reporter Charlie Crum has more on that. Charlie, what's happening? Uh, the nation's highest court hears arguments today over California's ban on same-sex marriages passed in 2008 as Proposition 8 and the federal lawsuit that seeks to overturn that ban. Now, tomorrow the court will consider a federal law that prevents legally uh, married gay couples from receiving the same benefits that married straight Americans receive. Uh, the high court's ruling on uh, the gay marriage issue is not expected, however, until late June. Uh, Same-sex marriage is legal in nine states and Washington, D.C. Uh, President Barack Obama came out in support of same-sex marriage last May, uh, but Congress has passed the Defense of Marriage Act back in 1996, um, defining marriage as a union between only a man and a woman. The Obama administration says that act is unconstitutional and supports its full repeal. Uh, now, in Michigan, uh, voters approved a state constitutional amendment in 2004 that defines marriage as the union between a man and a woman. All right, Charlie, thank you very much. And recently, Oakland Press spoke with the head of Michigan's largest LGBT community to get his thoughts on the legality of same-sex marriages. Everybody has the right uh, to, in my opinion, to uh, legally marry the person that they love. Uh, you don't have to like it for it to be the law. Uh, you know, I, I am a, a gay man myself, but I could conceivably marry a single woman tonight in Las Vegas we could get married, and that marriage has to be recognized by all other states in the Union. Why? Because of the full faith and credit clause and the equal protection clause of the Constitution of the United States. So why is it then that as a gay man I can get married in only a handful of states, but I can still legally get married in those handful of states, and it not be recognized in all other states of the Union? It is blatantly unconstitutional. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard says they've arrested a Pontiac man who was known as Funeral Bandit. The man was caught at a pawn shop in Colorado and he was selling items that he stole from people's homes when they were out for funerals. Reporter John Turk has more information on that. John? That's right, F. Top. According to Bouchard, funeral bandit suspect Todd Lloyd Griffin would pick up a newspaper to see where funerals or estate sales were being held and rob families' houses while they were attending services. Griffin's been tied to at least 16 home invasions spanning Oakland, Genesee, Livingston, Macomb, and Shiawassee counties since last June. He had been on the run since March 21st when members of the sheriff's fugitive apprehension team went to his home in Pontiac to serve an unrelated warrant but found out he wasn't home. Several items seized from Griffin's home were put on display Monday during a news conference detailing the case. Computers, jewelry, dinnerware, electronic appliances, and more filled an entire room at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Other items of little or no street value were also taken from several homes. This particular carved wood block that has mom, to any parent that gets a present from their child, that's priceless. To this individual, it's meaningless on the street. You can't get any money for that. So he wasn't just stealing their property, he was stealing their heart. Strangely enough, Monday, the day Griffin was arrested, also happened to be his birthday. Before learning of the suspect's capture, Bouchard remarked, that's poetic justice. He robs people during funerals and we're hopefully going to arrest him on his birthday. That they did, and sheriff's deputies will be following up with warrant requests for the known home invasions. John Turk, thank you very much. The Affordable Health Care Law, otherwise known as Obamacare, is going to kick into Michigan on its own after Governor Rick Snyder refused to partner with the federal government. Oakland Press spoke with County Executive Elbrooks Patterson on the prospects of the federal health exchanges. The fact that they turned down the exchange here in Michigan shows a lot of things. A, we still don't understand it. B, we don't want to facilitate it, apparently, and I'm one of those people. Uh, but not to facilitate it puts you in even greater harm's way. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, but I understand why they didn't vote for it. And, and they thought maybe they were making it easier and quicker for Obamacare to be kicked in in Michigan. There's a lot of us out there keep thinking, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, when we were teenagers, like uh, uh, we had acne. If we didn't do, anything, didn't do anything about it, it'd go away. Well, if they don't think about Obamacare, it may go away. That's not true. And it's time for Oakland Press sports columnist Pat Caputo's video blog. I think Michigan State has a better chance of beating Duke than Michigan does of beating Kansas in the Sweet 16 coming up this week. 
I think Michigan has a shot to win that game, but they have to make their three-point field goal attempts. That's a great equalizer for Michigan in this game. And then Hardaway Jr. is a t terrific shooter. Nick Stoskis has a lot of ability as a shooter. Glenn Robinson III, a very good shooter. Trey Burke will have to be at his very best. And then Michigan will have a shot in this game. Uh, Mitch McGarry is not going to be able to bulldoze his way in and do some of the things he did at the Palace last week. Uh, Withy, the center for Kansas, is a big player, an athletic player, a player who's going to play in the NBA and has experience on his side. Completely different dynamic for Michigan in this game. But they do have a shot, but I, I expect Kansas to win that game. Michigan State and Duke, uh, to me, it's splitting hairs. Tom Izzo versus Mike Krzyzewski. You've got some terrific players on Duke and Plumlee and Kelly. Uh, you look at uh, Michigan State, you've got Adrian Payne playing very well. Gary Harris is a terrific freshman. Key for Michigan State will be Keith Appley in that point guard. And their point guard play overall, they cannot commit a lot of turnovers and beat the Blue Devils. The mistakes, that won't work. Now Michigan State, it's about a 50-50. It's a pick em game. And that's our newscast for today. Don't forget to watch us tomorrow at theoaklandpress.com. I'm Aftar Borkab. Have a great day.